dear students welcome to another day's lecture in the elements of machine design in the previous lecture we saw uh, towards the end of the lecture the strength of the transverse fillet welder joint see the transverse fillet joint it can be either single transverse fillet joint like this only on one side here or it can be double transverse fillet joint like this on two sides okay and then we have derived considering this uh, mm, uh, you know considering uh, this triangle uh, a b c d a b c we have derived a formula for the strength okay and we have come to two equations one is this is the, mm, the this is the uh, equation that you have got for the uh, single transverse fillet weld and uh, this is the this is the equation for double transverse fillet weld hey see here SW is the size of the weld and T is the throat thickness. Okay, with those parameters, so what we have got is these two equations. Sigma T is the tensile strength in both cases. You see, when they are subjected like this, you see, when they are being pulled like this, what type of uh, stresses are induced in the welds in the weld what types of stresses are induced are tensile stresses both are tensile stresses so this is about the transverse fillet welds now let us come to parallel fillet weld now parallel fillet welds transverse means we welded here and here underneath but now parallel fillet weld means we are welding here parallel why it is parallel because the load and this uh, welding these two load direction and the welding these two are parallel okay so let us see, see in the front view it looks like this in the side view it looks like this you see actually this is protruding outside this is in the back this is the bigger plate this one and this one is the smaller plate this one okay in the top view okay in the top view it looks like this okay I see only this much is seen here hmm. actually the bigger plate is from here to here and see from here to here okay see the load applied is P only so the load applied P you see here which type of stresses will be in used here the stresses uh, here it will be failing in shear it will not be failing in tension it will it will uh, shear and come these two okay so stress induced in the fillet weld is a shear stress due to the actual force p so that can be given as tau that is sigma stress is the load that is the pull tensile actual pull p upon two times of throat area okay two times of throat area why because uh, in two sides uh, it is there now throat area see what is the distance lw2 lw2 this is the distance or you can simply say lw oh sorry on the top we are calling lw1 the bottom we are calling lw2 sometimes no these two need not be equal one may be bigger or longer, one may be shorter. It is not necessary that we have to weld throughout okay, the, the entire length. The half of it also we can weld. Okay, even if it is half, then we'll be able to find out what is what are the strength equations. Okay, so so we are having this throat area as we derived before is equal to 0 0.707 into SW into LW. Okay, upon 2 okay and uh, so therefore p will become this 
okay this equation this equation is much similar to uh, this equation only that here tensile stress is there and here is the shear stress top okay so this is double fillet uh, pa double parallel fillet weld now let us come to combined transverse and fillet weld see that means what you have not only welded here but also here both entire this entire in the c shape you have done it okay now you call this as l1 length one and this is l2 okay so in combination of parallel and transverse fillet weld the weld is subjected to tensile stress in this weldment there is tensile stress and in these two weldments there is shear stress so therefore you see uh, the tensile part of it is sigma t is it's it's only single um, tra transverse fillet weld okay so therefore it is 0.707 as wt lw1 into sigma t and the shear stress on both sides it is there by, by multiply by 2 then this will be the thing so the total strength of the weld will be this a uh, the uh, uh, equation a plus equation b so this will be total pt will be uh, this one okay first he has taken toss stress this one then then this sigma one okay these two okay so this is the equation okay now let us try to solve some problem say what is the note here stress concentration factor for transverse fillet weld under dynamic loading you see these are all for static loading what we have derived are for static loading no cyclic loadings or dynamic loading is not coming if dynamic load is there then 1.5 uh, stress concentration factor and uh, 2.7 uh, for uh, parallel fillet weld under dynamic load you can take for transverse fillet weld 1.5 parallel fillet well 2.7 you can take okay so don't worry Mary. i don't think they will ask you uh, to apply these things but even if they do you just uh, go through some of the problems then you will have an idea how to do it okay now let us come to come and solve one problem okay this is a problem you see it says it states find the length of the weld weld run for a plate of size 120 mm wide and 15 mm thick that means what there is a plate here this plate with this 120 mm and this thickness thickness means you know like in the coming perpendicular to the paper coming towards us the height is 15 15 mm the thickness it is to be welded by means of a single transverse weld and a double parallel fillet weld see this is the single transverse weld this one and these two are double um, what is that fillet welds double parallel fillet welds when it is subject to dynamic loading see here in this question dynamic loading is given so we will be using those stress concentration factors okay Inside, no, it is not necessary that in every question they will be asking dynamic loading. In this problem, it is asked. So, we will use that and uh, you will know how to do it. Okay. Then, sigma t permissible uh, tensile stress is so much and the shear stress is how much it is given. It is 75 and 60. Okay. This is for the welded uh, weldments. In the welds, the tensile strength is 75. In the weld, the shear stress width is 60. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, and one, one more thing you may have noticed, uh, th this is strength uh, 75, uh, you see they have not specifically mentioned that it, this is for weldment only. So even the plates are also having the same tensile strength uh, because it is, uh, it is not given you take like that okay and one 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 thing that is not given here is what is p you see the tensile pull is there 
the tensile pull P is how much that is not given so therefore uh, we will try to find out uh, you know ourselves say P is equal to we know if something is being pulled in uh, tension okay this can tear like this here okay here it can tear so here if it is tearing what is the resisting area this is 120 and the thickness is 15 this is the area that is like and uh, it is uh, having strength of 75 newton per mm square okay so if you multiply this you will get you will get uh, uh, the the tensile pull see 135 kilo newtons kilo means 10 to the power 3 newtons okay okay now let us call this one as lw1 that is the uh, that is the uh, what we should say the length of the transverse fillet weld see now transverse fillet weld is 120 they say actually in this corner also it is there this corner we don't consider only this is the length that is 120 but in this 120 also we will minus 12.5 mm because you know we will be starting towards the stars starting you no know, it will not have uh, you know uh, it is starting the weld won't be good towards the ending also weld won't be good okay therefore you know at 12.5 mm in all the things okay in all the problems 12.5 mm you can minus saying that you know the to, towards the beginning towards the end it will not be good so we are minusing 12.5 mm so length no though it is 120 mm you should not consider 120 mm you should consider uh, 120 minus 12.5 mm only as the length so this lw1 this is this becomes the effective length this okay the effective length will become 107.5 mm only okay then similarly length of the parallel fillet weld uh, length of this parallel fillet weld uh, is lw2 okay then size of the weld is sw the thickness is uh, t is uh, 15 okay then stress concentration factor um, stress concentration factor is 1.5 uh, for the transverse fillet weld and stress concentration factor for the parallel fillet weld is 2.7 that uh, you know here we have seen uh, here we have seen these two only these two you have to remember okay so now stress concentration because the mm, stress concentration uh, factor is there so what will happen this uh, tensile stress you know you we will reduce the tensile stress it was 75 it is not 7.5 like here it is given what was the thing 75 mm, there's some dot by mistake it came okay 75 by 1.5 you take it so this this is reduced. ultimately what because of the stress concentration factor oh it its um, uh, strength won't be 75 its strength will be less than 75 so it should come less see if if it is coming less that means you know you are going in the right direction okay then shear stress now considering the uh, stress concentration factor uh, 2.7 this comes to 22.22 okay this is also fine this is because this is less than this okay that's all you have to do okay now 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 the question was now in the question what was asked you see in the find the length of the weld run but in the form of well, length of the weld run this side thing we know already that is 120 only these two we don't know see that means how much you know this plate you know, when it is put over this overlap this lapping portion how much is that that we should know so we can you know we can push it inside or pull it outside so this can increase or reduce so that is what we are finding out how much okay so we have the yeah, for combined transverse and fillet weld we are having 
equation one transverse world transverse world uh, you know strength is this and uh, two fillet wells fillet wells strength is this okay this is 0 0.707 into SW LW1 into tau uh, sigma D plus 1.414 into SW into LW2 into uh, tau SD. See, this LW2 is combination, uh, the summation of up and down, both worlds. Okay. And I don't know what is this 135. Uh, okay. See, this should not be there. Cut it off. Okay, now we are substituting SW, we don't know strength of the world is, uh, size of the world is 15 and LW1 is effective uh, length of the transverse uh, uh, world, 107.5. Sigma D, the reduced uh, sigma, uh, thing because we are considering the dynamic loading. And then this, then the SW is 15, LW2 we have to find out and tau D is 22.22. Okay, from this equation everything is known. P we have found out initially. Okay, uh, that P here, this one should have been here. Okay, they have by mistake what they should write here on the left hand side, they put it here. Okay. So, in this entire equation, what is unknown? LW2 is unknown. From that LW2, you will find it. Okay. And then, for starting and stopping of the run weld, 12.5 mm. Uh, see, this, this only, this is the, what you have got is, see, because LW1 is the effective length, so LW2 also will be effective length. So what you got is the effective weld. And for starting, stopping of the weld run, uh, again you add 12.5 mm as reinforcement. Okay. So 12.5 mm you add, that means this LW2 become 217.599. Okay. So now what half of it will be above, half of it will be below. Okay. And on the side, where anyway, we are having the um, end distance of how much? 120, 120 mm. Okay. So, this is how you have to solve this problem. Okay. You understand? And uh, other problems of welded joints, you just go through the book and you try to solve on your level uh, some problems, typical problems. Okay, uh, sometimes uh, you know you may have to find out uh, you know uh, the induced stresses, sometimes you may have to find the lengths of the welds and other things. Uh, okay, you solve different types of problems and you will give, get an idea. Okay, now with this we finish welded joints, but uh, in the in the uh, in the threaded uh, fasteners. Uh, welded fasteners we finished, threaded fasteners we have not seen the problems, numerical problems. So let us go through the numerical problems. See, you remember we uh, saw eccentric loading acting parallel to the axis of the bolt like this and we have derived the equations also if you remember, okay. We remember we, we, we have uh, not derived this small w. See, small w is equal to capital L into uh, divided by 2 upon L1 square plus L2 square. Okay. Uh, like that we have derived. Okay. And this is for eccentric load parallel to the axis. The first one was, uh, for, it was parallel. Now this is perpendicular to the axis. You see the axis is, uh, the bolts are like this and the load is like this this is perpendicular so the perpendicular also we have derived there also we found uh, small w and this small w mm. oh, yeah where was this small w uh, here there is the same w l upon 2 l1 uh, 2 upon 2 into l1 square plus l2 square but here in this case in the first case, both were tensile stresses. In the second case, one is a tensile, one is a uh, 
one is uh, direct shear one is the direct uh, shear the other is tensile stress because of the tilting okay so therefore we can, we found out the uh, the principal loads you remember we found out principal loads like this let's say where known instead of sigma we have put wt and instead of tau we put ws and we have found out okay so that way we said we can find out what is the core diameter of the um, uh, bolts okay now let us see a problem okay here is a wall bracket okay a wall bracket wall bracket means the bracket which is fixed in the wall a wall bracket it is shown in the figure it is fixed to a wall by means of four bolts four bolts where are the four bolts uh, yeah here there are two bolts here there are two bolts from the bottom the axis of the lower bolts is uh, 75 mm and uh, the axis of the upper bolts from the bottom is the 75 plus 500 575 mm distance and uh, from this wall to the application of the load this eccentric load eccentricity we can call it as 650 mm and this load is 40 kilo newtons okay now come back to the question what are they saying find the size of the bolt size of the bolt means what is the diameter of the bolts that we have to find out now we have four bolts so four bolts will be will be all four will be same size okay for interchangeability purposes say actually the bolts here should be more strong and here should be, even if they are less strong it is okay but because of interchangeability you see what we do is all the four bolts of same size so which which should be designed the bolts here should be designed or here here we should be designing because wherever the maximum load comes there we should design because if bolt breaks that means if it fails it fails where maximum load is coming okay here we will design okay so the safe ten stress in tension for the bolt may be assumed 70 newton or mm square here you see it is only in tension is given sigma uh, sigma t is given whereas tau is not given okay let us see what to do okay now the data data we have sigma t is 70 load is w w 40 into 10 cube that is this load this one here he used P and here it is using W. Doesn't matter. Okay. You don't get confused. That's enough. Okay. Then L, you know, this eccentricity, uh, 650. And the L1 is 75. See, the from the tilting edge, this is the tilting edge. From the tilting edge to this uh, axis of the first bolts is 75. And this L2, that means from here to the second axis is 575 and number of bolts n is 4 see now because of this two forces come one is if the load is too much no this plate entire plate itself will go down why it will cut here and here all the four bolts see you see how to imagine see now both bolts are there and this bracket is there see suppose one big load like a big elephant load has come what it will cut here and here it just shear off all the four bolts so that is how you just imagine so the direct shear load will be shear load we are talking now not uh, um, stress so load is equal to whatever load we are applying that is shared by four bolts so 40 upon 4 okay here he put 10 to the power 3 here he forgot 10 to the power 3 but anyway he has put kilo here no problem so ws is 10 kilo newtons or 10 into 10 to the power 3 newtons this is the fire one load direct load but uh, because of the eccentricity a tilting takes place 
and the tilting takes place and the maximum tensile load is see the shear load is equal in all the four whereas tensile load is not equal in all the four upper bolts will have more tensile stress that is what we are calling as maximum tensile load on the upper bolts and the lower bolts will have minimum tensile load and we don't we need not bother about the minimum tensile load only where maximum is there we should find out and design that the minimum will take care of it itself okay so the maximum tensile load uh, wt on the upper bolts okay is equal to uh, this uh, small w into l small w is wl upon 2 into l1 square plus l2 square see this is the equation that we have derived okay now uh, you substitute all these values you know this 40 into 10 q L is 650. L is the eccentric and uh, eccentricity, and L2 is the distance where the maximum tensile load is coming from the tilting edge. Okay, upon 2 into 75. This is L1 square is 75 square plus L2 square 500. So you will get this much tensile load. Now, when once you have got shear load and tensile load what you can do is you can find out the principal stress now which principal stress we can find out we can because you know in the question in the question only sigma sigma stress is given tau is not given so we will find only the tensile uh, principal load or maximum principal stress only we'll find out not maximum shear stress uh, shear load Okay, maximum principal load only we are considering. So maximum principal load formula is uh, this. This is you know easy to remember. No need of uh, remembering this in terms of Ws. You remember in terms of sigmas. You know sigma uh, sigma one is equal to half of sigma t plus square root of sigma t square plus four tau square. So wherever sigma t uh, is there, you replace it by W t. And wherever tau is there, you replace by Rws. Okay. Anyway, now you have all the things, and you find out you find out what is called as effective tensile load. Okay. That means what? There is shear stress also, shear load also, and tensile load also. And if both are there, you know what is the effective load? You see what is the tensile load here? 22.23. And this is 26 see this value the resultant value should be more than your tensile load then only it will be correct okay because this is the effect the tensile load this is the tensile load and this is the effective tensile load you see that means hereafter we are not going to consider the shear stress you see and the shear stress effect also has come into this thing therefore this should be a little more if this is 22 this is 26 correct suppose you are having 22 and here you are getting 18 you can yourself understand that somewhere some mistake has happened and it is not correct okay in the middle you can be checking like this see how much should be this should be more than 22 so you have got it 26 that means your, your answer is correct you know these mistakes can come because you know while you are typing when you when you are using the calculator also mistakes can come in therefore you should be careful okay uh, now once you know the load you have to find out the size of the bolts now the size of the bolts we we, we have we know size of the bolts uh, you see where did we use the four value uh, here we have used four value okay okay now now says sigma t is equal to load upon area load is the effective load this one area is by 4 dc square so sigma t is uh, given 70 and the load we have found out 26.066 into 10 cube because it is kilonewtons okay and divided by the 
divided by 5 by 4. Okay. Then, so no DC square you will get and DC width 21.77. So this is the core diameter you have got. You see, just you know in your fingers you think how big 20 will be, 21 will be. That means these bolts are not small bolts. Why? Because the load is not small. Load is how much? 40 kilonewtons. 40 kilonewtons means what? 400 kg. 400 kg means what? If one person is, uh, one of you is 50 kg, so 8 people are standing here. <laughs> how much load it will be, you think? So, so therefore, to withstand so much load, this these bolts also should be bigger in size. Say 20, how much we got? 21. Now this is core diameter. Now you should not leave here. You have to find out what is the nominal diameter. And uh, okay, nominal diameter, what is the formula? You, do you remember the formula? Uh, now see, nominal diameter is core diameter upon 0 0.84. 0 0.84. So this is this you will get. 25.92 rounded to 26 and you can say the size of the bolt is m26 m is metric thread and 26 is the nominal diameter or the major diameter or the outside diameter that is the mean okay now let us consider see another problem this another problem oh, oh where i have One minute, I will come to the place. Yeah. Yes. See the bracket carrying vertical load 25 kilonewtons. This is the 25 kilonewtons load as shown in the figure. The figure also is given. The load is taken by four bolts. You see, here there are two bolts, and here there are two bolts for fixing the bracket. So now determine the size of the bolt for permissible. Uh, tensile stress of 80 newton per mm square now you have to you know if you have the problem like this figure like this and uh, this is the base plate and this is where we are applying load and this is uh, eccentric so you should be able to say what is uh, from where where is the tilting edge is it tilting about here or is it tilting about here See now you can if you think if you consider a little you will know that it is tilting about this. So all our lengths will be from the tilting edge. See uh, the first bolt's axis is at a distance of L1. The second bolt's axis is at a distance of L2, and the eccentricity is L. Okay, this eccentricity is given in the in the figure. This 25 kilonewtons is given. And these values 40, 120, 40, these are also given. Okay. Now what you have to find out is what what are they asking? Determine the size of the bolt. You see what is the diameter of the bolts that are here and here. Now you see because it is tilting, you see, and this is these bolts are nearer to the edge, they will experience lesser load, whereas away from this, from the tilting edge. Here, these bolts will experience more load. So now, you have to design here. Now, in this case, the primary stress also is tensile and the secondary stress also is tensile. So here, there is no need of I'm finding out the principal loads. Okay. You see, I told you in the beginning itself, if both are sigma stresses, you just add them. But if what is one is sigma stress, another is tau stress, then you have to find out the principal stresses. You remember that, okay? Now come, what is the data given? W is 25 kilonewtons. N is 4, that is number of bolts. This eccentricity is 200 mm, L. And L1 is the first bolt's distance is 40. L2 is the second bolt's distance is 160. This from, from the figure you got it. Now come first is direct load. Direct load is shared by all the four equally. You see in the previous problem also we saw direct shear load is shared equally. So each bolt if total load that is coming is 25 kilonewtons. Okay. 
25 kilo newtons means how much load 25 means 250 kg 250 kg means if each of you is 50 kg uh, five people are standing here <laughs> okay like that so much so this is also not small load okay so this is the this is the direct tensile load we have got now let us consider the secondary load for the secondary load first you you have w small w you have small w is uh, capital w into l upon 2 into l1 square plus l2 square this formula we derived in the previous lecture so you know w 25 uh, 25 into 10 cube this 10 cube should be here and l is 200 under 2 into 14 20 square plus 166 so you are got getting 91.91 this is this is the load per unit distance okay here it is written load acting on volt per unit distance so as the distance keeps on increasing this load will increase total load will increase okay so the bolts are heavy loaded at distance l2 from the tilting edge so there w uh, t2 will be w into l2 this w we know already this w is 91.91 and the l2 is 120 so total load will be this much okay so now the total so where, where maximum load is coming here maximum load uh, lesser load is coming here maximum load is coming okay here no one is tensile load, the other prime, direct tensile load, the other is the secondary tensile load. So primary tensile load, secondary tensile load, both you add because both are tensile loads only, no shear load is there. Okay, suppose one is tensile load, one is compressive, then you will subtract. If both are tensile, you will add. And if one is tensile, one is uh, um, shear, then you will find out the principal loads. Okay, now you have come here the total tensile load you add these two so one is uh, 6250 another is 11000 so 6000 11000 17000 you will get okay now the size of the bolt now the size of the bolt for finding this you will have sigma t upon load upon area you see load is this load you have to take 17 uh, 279.41 upon area is pi by 4 d square dc square okay so you substitute this and when you substitute um, when you sub, sub, substitute sorry, when you substitute this is 80 80 is it given in the problem let me check once yeah it is given you see the permissible tensile stress 80 is given so that 80 we have taken on the left side and this load um, by adding those two we take took here pi by 4 dc square from here we can find out dc square and dc dc is coming to 16.58 millimeters you see in the in you put it in your right hand uh, you see this 15 mm distance how big will be between your two fingers your thumb and index finger you see how big it will be 16 mm 16 mm bolt you imagine holding the such bolt in your hand see it is not a small bolt see normally small bolts what to, sizes we normally handle are uh, 10 10 mm 12 mm okay those are the normal things but these are bigger 16 mm will be a little thick and 22 mm will be much thicker okay like that okay this is the core diameter but you have to find out the outside diameter outside diameter this is the formula you just remember okay and ultimately what you should you know in your form uh, thing also core diameter will be less outside diameter will be more suppose you are getting 16 here and you are getting 14 here that means you have made some mistake you, you check your mm, problem again calculation again okay so you should get more than 16 point something so you got 19.74 and you round it to 20 mm and you say finally size of the bolt is m20 okay like this you have to solve problem <coughs> so with this we have finished another unit okay now 
uh, in the next lecture we will uh, start new, new unit thank you